Wonderful. That was great. It was, it was, it was. Uh, welcome to our uh, first segment for this morning. And what a lovely introduction yes, to it was. this segment. I wish we could get an introduction like that for every segment. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Even if it's our producer and yes, the cameraman exactly. dancing to start the segment, <laughs> that would be wonderful. But we are joined by representatives from the International <laughs> Youth Federate Fellowship. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you put federation in my mind <laughs> earlier. Fellowship. And we have on set with us Mr. Jermaine Garvey, who is the director of IYF Belize. We have Mr. Philemon, Phil, Philemon Yu, who is the director of IYF Memphis, USA, as well as Emily and Luke. Catch your breaths. Yeah, your you breath. just saw them on yeah. stage. <laughs> They're volunteers with IYF from South Korea. Good morning to all Good of you. Morning, Good morning, guys, and welcome. Wonderful. So let's start uh, for our viewers who may not be familiar with IYF Belize. Uh, what it is uh, you guys do, where are your roots, where you're coming from, and, and how your uh, work in Belize uh, started, how it's been going. Let's, let's start there. Sure. Um, IYF is a global nonprofit youth organization. Uh, we're Christian based. Mm -hmm. um, our purpose is to develop world class youth with a type of mind that will change the world. Uh, normally, we say starting and changing one youth at a time. Um, IYF started, was started in Belize two years ago. Mm -hmm. And since that time, we've been working together with the youth across Belize. We've been working together with the Ministry of Youth through the Department of Youth Service mm -hmm. and also other youth organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, we are bringing for the second time what we call the Korean Fest by short, K-Fest. Mm -hmm. And it's a Korean camp that we expose the youth in Belize to the Korean culture. Yeah. Now, so you held, you held the event last year. Uh, I remember you guys coming on set to yes. promote it. What was the event, uh, what was the experience like last year? Uh, it was awesome. Mm. Um, I did not know so many students in Belize, they like the Korean culture. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was gonna say. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. For instance, I was able to identify uh, at least one song, and then you said that it was BTS. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. So yes, there are a lot of people that really love K-pop here in uh -huh. Belize. Uh, they have their own fan base, but just the Korean culture as well. So I'd love to talk more about that. Um, but I want to get your input, Philemon, because you are the director of IMF Men Memphis USA. So let's talk about the work that you also do in the U.S. and how you were able to come here in Belize and also contribute. Oh yes, so, so first thank you for having me on the show. And um, so we, uh, in Memphis actually, uh, right now, um, Memphis is ranked the third most violent city in the United States. Mm -hmm. So number one is Detroit, number two is Baltimore, number three is Memphis. And so what we've been working on, especially in Memphis, in terms of uh, youth um, prevention, like youth crime, the delinquency prevention is, uh, we call it mind education. It's a social, emotional, like a uh, curriculum, character development curriculum, and also kind of like a um, healthy mindset curriculum that talks about the insides of a person's heart through five different categories, which is number one, about the world of the heart. Number two, about self-control and desire. Number three is about deep thinking. And number four is about connection and exchange. And number five is about the, uh, the ability for someone to change their heart and the power of change in the heart. And so the hope is, in Memphis especially, that we work with young people, we, uh, they have so much potential. And so um, one person told me that um, if we're looking just for that one person, because that one person could be the next uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., that one yeah. person could be the next Nelson Mandela, right? So if we're able to kind of copy and paste the mindset and the heart and the vision that these great um, visionaries had into one young person, they can make a change in their community. They can make a change in their neighborhood. And so, you know, um, for, you know for someone to be heading down the wrong path, it's a paper-thin difference between someone heading down the right path. Mm -hmm. But we believe that paper-thin difference is, lies in the mindset. Right. And so if we're able just not to encourage and to have students um, share and be able to communicate and be able to really ex uh, experience other cultures, experience new insights, then they realize that, they're not alone, and then they can overcome the difficulties that they have together, and then we can build a better society, in wh in wherever it is, together. 
I, I was going to ask, and you kind of uh, uh, mentioned it, uh, I was going to ask how is it that uh, Korean culture fuses uh, with your mission uh, to promote uh, this type of change and Christian values? So uh, that's a really good question. You know, a lot of people like Korean culture, and um, it's uh, and also a lot uh, like they like K-pop, of course, but they also mm -hmm. like K-dramas. Mm -hmm. So if you look on Netflix, right, there's a lot of K-dramas. And when I asked folks um, around, like non-Korean folks, they said they liked it because it talks about the heart. Mm -hmm. It's not just it's um you know if for a better way of saying it, it's like um someone there's someone on the outside. But their heart might be different. So, for example, someone might have a rough exterior, or not be kind of. They might be kind of rude, but inside they have a lot of love. Yeah. And then when they express that love in ways that normal people cannot express, that really, when we uh, feel that, when we see that, that gives me hope in my heart. Mm -hmm. And K dramas has been uh, about the heart. It's not. It's, it's very how to say. It's very in depth. Things are not at not superficial. It's not, not on sur surface. It's not on surface, right? Uh, this, you know, the person that might seem like the bad guy actually might be the person sacrificing the most to help mm -hmm. the good guy, right? Mm -hmm. And then when people see that and see, they realize that, wow, the people I judged and like, that I wrote off in my life, what if they were the ones that were trying to help me the most? Maybe mm -hmm. they were the ones trying to love me the most. You know, especially students and their parents, right? Especially in this age of digital technology, you know, you, go, you come home and you have your cell phone, you go in the room and just watch Netflix, right? Yeah. But if they're able to realize the heart of their parents, that is what truly brings change to the young person. Mm -hmm. like, how much my parents sacrifice for me, how much they work hard for me. Their parents don't say it, but it's in their heart. Mm -hmm. But if the students can th discover that heart, then the whole family can be united, and not a, just a superficial uniting, but it, it, heart to heart. And so that's, that's what the K-drama has been about. Let's bring uh, Emily and Luke into the conversation. You guys are volunteers, and you came all the way from South Korea. First off, I want to know, is this your first time here in Belize? If yes, what is the experience like so far? It's, uh, for all of us, it's first time to be in Belize. And uh, like we've been to Jamaica, but not, never in Belize. Mm -hmm. And it's really different. And like I could see everything is so peaceful and everything is so pretty. And like people are so pure. Like they are all, all of them are really open to us. So mm -hmm. whenever when we approach to somebody for K-Fest or other events that we were having, they were really happy to talk with us and they were like really happy to like interact with us. Mm -hmm. So it made us to be happy also. So mm -hmm. it was really good. And Luke? Yeah, uh, me too. Um, first time here. Uh, when I promote something, some like event in mm -hmm. US, they are also k kind but so, uh, but in the Bel when I was when I promote the event in Belize, people was uh, people was not kind. They just happy to talking with me. Mm -hmm. They like to talking with me. Mm -hmm. I felt I felt the Belize the Belize people is more uh, is better than other. <laughs> <laughs> how how challenging is it for uh, you guys to uh, connect? with uh, young people in uh, these different communities to spread uh, the message that you're seeking to spread. I mean, these guys take, take you to some, uh, some, some very challenging and rough communities. <laughs> you're talking Belize, Jamaica, <laughs> Memphis, uh, and they just throw you out there. But how challenging is it to connect with youths and young people uh, that, that are in your age group? Being honest, at first it was really hard and really burdened because I'm not the one who really talks to somebody yeah. like mm -hmm. right away. But uh, as ha like as I was receiving kind of, I should I, I would say like training. Mm -hmm. But as how I was learning like through IYF, I could actually challenge myself and I could like try to overcome my bur burdens mm -hmm. and like I could step forward as how they were like guiding us. And even there are many times that we become like discouraged and like being depressed sometimes, mm -hmm. but they always try to like care about our hearts and encourage us and lead our heart in the right way. Yeah. So that was how we could like overcome those things and actually try to talk with people. Yeah. And that was how we could actually get the happiness, I yeah. think. Luke, why did you decide to join IYF? Actually, honestly, honestly uh, here, when I come here, I don't I don't want to come this volunteer program this year. Mm -hmm. I, I in Korea, Korean male have to go military. 
So I want to go military first. Okay. But um, my parents, my friends, my my people who is around me, they recommend to me go this this year because they said this your age is best to learn. So yeah. mm -hmm. actually, I don't want to come this year, but uh, fo I followed their like their words, so mm -hmm. I came here. Mm -hmm. I I mean you. You've come from far. Yeah. I mean, this is a far journey. How long, how many days did it take, take for you guys to arrive in Belize? How, mon how much travel? A lot? Yeah, a lot. A lot, a lot of hours. hours. <laughs> a lot yeah. of hours. And why, uh, traveling so far, why do you think it's important uh, for uh, us here in Belize and across the world to hear uh, this message that you guys are bringing through your various activities and programs. Why is it important for us to hear this message? Because, like, I saw many youth are changing through IOIF, and me myself, or so, I wasn't the one who is like pride or like, 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 how should I say, extrovert, but mm -hmm. I was really the negative girl, and like, my life before I met IOIF was like really in depressed. But uh, as, ha as I met IYF and I, as I was like working with many people, I could really learn many different kind of things. As he said, like being honest, I was really isolated by myself, apart from my parents, even though they really loved me. But I didn't know their heart. But like through IYF, I could actually know my parents' heart, and I could actually become like connected with my parents. So my life literally like flipped over. It changed wow. a lot. Yeah. Wow. And I, I know you guys uh, have a have a relationship right now with uh, Minister Ferguson yes. and as well as the government of Belize. Uh, let's talk a bit about the importance of that relationship and uh, collaboration with public officials and community leaders in your efforts. Yeah. Um, We've seen uh, youth development across many countries and of course everybody will agree that the problem of youth is very prevalent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they are our future, so focus has to go on to them. But I think one of the things that distinguishes the IOIF, the programming that we do is not just on the outside, doing, going through some rudimentary routine and you know, making them better academically or something. The program that they're doing is changing them from the inside. That will produce the outside lasting effects. That is what, as Philemon mentioned earlier, is the mindset. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we've discovered that that is what is actually driving their every actions. So as we collaborate with the government, in any country that we go to, whatever the government is there, we want to share this program. Because we believe that if we can start to show to the persons what is on the inside that is driving them, because it's invisible, mm -hmm. they cannot see. But just like how we cannot see gravity, but we learn about gravity and it exists yeah. and how it affects us. Similarly, if we can learn about this world of the heart and how it's affecting us, then we believe that through the efforts from the government as well, we can see uh, from that side like a pyramid coming down, the effects and the changes among our young people. Mm -hmm. Also in the community, the pastors, the community leaders, other youth organizations, working together with them and sharing this mindset education program. So you said that you have been collaborating with the Department of Youth Services uh, through the IYF uh, Let's talk about some of the projects or some of the initiatives that have taken place so far. Right. Um, since Minister Ferguson went to South Korea last year for our annual World Camp, um, when he came back and he realized the effects of the mind education, he spoke with his department to work together with us. From that time, we've had a number of training first for the staff, okay. for them to understand what is the mindset education. Actually, right now, we're in collaboration trying to arrange for the in-depth training of a couple of their staff members so they can learn the program by themselves. And then, I guess, among the districts, mm -hmm. among the districts, they can have their district officers doing the programs there. So staff training is what we've done so far. Also, we've uh, the program on Mount Pine Ridge, mm -hmm. Mount Pine Ridge that was recently initiated, we're also scheduled to be a part of that program for them, okay. but it came to an end. abrupt end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and also, whenever all volunteers, they come here as well, utilizing their experiences and testimonies, because they're living testimonies in front of you, mm -hmm. as you heard Emily said, what she was before, but having gone through the program, 
the effects and the change is what you're seeing now. Yeah. Yeah. So we, youth, we also utilize them to have the time together with the Belizean youth to share. I mean, I'm different color, my language is different, but we have the same heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is how I was able to change. I, I'd like to bring uh, Falamon uh, into the conversation again to further elaborate on a comment you made earlier about uh, it being an issue of the heart. Because uh, my co-host and I were having a similar conversation mm -hmm. this morning about mm -hmm. violence in Belize mm -hmm. and perhaps where it begins. And uh, we were speaking to external issues like poverty, right. uh, uh, deprivation, and and the lack of some basic resources. Yeah. But yeah. family that structure, family structure, mm -hmm. and and that in essence is external. Right. Uh, so so how then uh, do you go from that to saying? it's an issue or it's a matter of, of the heart, you know? Yes, and so um, that's a good question, especially when I'm in Memphis. Mm -hmm. and, um, and a lot of people ask me, like, what are, you, what are you trying to do right now? You know, don't you see the poverty? Don't you see the broken households? Mm -hmm. and, then, and, I and I really thought about it. But when I, uh, you know, Memphis has actually a very torn history. And then one of the saddest moments in Memphis is that is where Dr. King was assassinated. Right? But then I thought about uh, these figures. Why do we admire these figures in history, like uh, Mahatma Gandhi and Dr. King? And I, I, it just, if I if you really think about it, a lot of people say that they're a product of their environment. I, I can't help but to live like this. Why? Uh, I, I don't have money. Or I, I don't have education. So I'm just a victim of my environment. I'm a product of my environment. But the reason why we admire people like Nelson Mandela is because their vision was so sure and their heart so strong, they changed their environment, mm -hmm. right? They, they, they changed their environment. So if we can have students that have a little bit different mindset, people that serve society, right? people that serve other people, right? And then when I heard my minister Ferguson went to Korea, he really enjoy, enjoyed seeing so many young students volunteering, right? And that, that culture of service, and the culture of building up things together and working together, it seems small and it seems very abstract. It's not concrete, as you were saying before. It's not like, oh, we can solve poverty or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. But it has concrete consequences, right. right? And so, and a little bit of history of Korea, 1950s, after the Korean War, Korea was, was totally devastated. And even the country of Haiti would send foreign aid to Korea. Can you believe that, right? Mm. <laughs> right. But 60, around 50 years later, Korea is now probably top 15 in terms of GDP per capita. Mm. And so all that came about not because of natural resources or nothing concrete, but there's a couple individuals in Korean s s history that took abstract concepts and made them reality. Mm -hmm. That's where Samsung came from. That's where Hyundai came from, right? And so these many people despise the abstract worlds but the concrete world were all designed in the abstract world. So same with the heart. The heart is a blueprint. If we can just change the blueprint of the heart just a little bit, then the structure of a person will be different. And like then that. those structures will build up a society that will be very beautiful. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. So what we have uh, promoting, and I appreciate, I appreciate your explanation. Uh, first, let me say, I appreciate your explanation because what I'm, what I'm getting is that uh, like like these uh, figures that we celebrate, these these uh, men and women, there was something about their hearts right. uh, that uh, led them to bring change right. to their communities, despite the circumstances mm -hmm. that they faced and mm -hmm. that their communities faced. And so, so so that's key, and I appreciate that point. Now we're here to talk about also the 2023 K-Fest <laughs> in yes. Belize. So this is the second one, yes. correct? Uh, let's hear uh, what we can expect from 2023 K-Fest. So um, uh, I don't want to butt in, but- No, no, go so, ahead. Um, you know, we're very excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. It's, a, it's a Korean festival, so sharing the Korean culture. So we're going to have uh, people coming out. Uh, they're going to be teaching. They're the volunteers teaching the okay. programs right. and uh, hosting the program. And so it's 100% volunteer run, right, mm -hmm. just by these folks. And so we're going to be teaching K-pop, and we're going to be teaching K-dances, oh, wow. and we're going to be teaching how to read and write the Korean language, how to use the Korean language. We're going to teach them how to cook a Korean dish. Mm. And we're going to do uh, face painting. We're going to have a, a lot of programs ready for them. And then uh, at the end of it, we're all going to get, we're going to get together. And of course, we, do, you know, we get to know each other, but also we're going to share a lecture about mindset mm -hmm. and then talk about how you know, their 
the future of Belize, and then they have the potential to bring a much bigger and better uh, world to their own, to their own lives, and also to the lives of the people around them. So we're very excited. Right. Now, where and when is the event? So it will be this Saturday. Okay. October 21 uh -huh. at St. John's College okay. in the okay. auditorium. Oh, wonderful. Uh, last year, for the, when we did it, we did it two times. The first time, over 200 students attended. Wow. And even after the event was finished, many people were texting, oh, we were unable to come because of this reason. Can you guys do it again? <laughs> they forced us to do it a second week. Oh, <laughs> wow. And then we did it one more week, 100 more students attended. So oh. over 300 students total last year attended this program and they were really excited. So you guys are anticipating uh, it to be equally as crowded as it was last year, yes. I imagine. Yes. Is, there, is there anything uh, in particular, I mean you all are leading this event that you're looking forward to, both of you? Yeah, go ahead. No <laughs> rush, no rush. Take <laughs> your time. Uh, for me, I really want to interact with many Belize peop like students because like, I really want to learn what they're thinking of and like, how they're living a life. And I even want to share how I'm living a life because the culture is different and every like, language and everything is different. But we can just be connected with, uh, through KeyFest. And like, it's not easy for me to come to Belize many times. I, uh, I wish I could, but yeah. it, it's not easy. So when I come here, I really want to like, interact with many students so that we can share the happiness together and we can really enjoy it together. Yeah. For you, anything? Yeah. Uh, Me too. Uh, now I'm in college, so I don't have, I can't, I don't have many chance to travel other countries. So yeah. I want to make uh, many friends in here. Also, I, I want to. I'm not good teacher, but I I want to be a good teacher to them. Uh, I want to teach. Now I will teach the dance to them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I want to just enjoy with them. Yeah. And Emily, what will you be teaching? I will be a K-pop teacher. You have dance? No, no, the song. The I will song. teach you the song, but okay. I'm not going to sing. Uh, who's <laughs> we are not a singer. Who's going to cook? Who's going to teach the cook? Uh, some uh, other volunteers. Okay. Uh, is there any particular dish that we're, they're going to? Yes. What's the dish? It's like a vegetable, vegetable mm -hmm. fry. Okay, it's like a, Korean a stir style. fry. Yeah. Not really stir fry, it's like a coating vegetable uh -huh. fry, but it's a, like a three layer vegetable fry. It's uh -huh. really good. It sounds you gotta try it, you gotta I come might and try just it. Be there. Yeah. <laughs> Change my heart with cooking. Right. <laughs> Give me food. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, so the event is this Saturday. Yes. St. John's, is it free? It's only fifteen dollars, okay. uh -huh. and that's because we have some material that we have to cover. Okay, and it will be at from ten a.m. Yeah, all right, good. All right. And they can register iyfbelize.org slash Korean camp. So you have to register to attend. We we would like them to because that will help with the pre-registration uh -huh. process okay. to uh -huh. cut down the amount of time before. Okay. But if they didn't register before, still hop Come on in. over. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, wonderful. Well, guys, this was a pleasure. I enjoyed. It. Every part of the conversation, I especially enjoyed the dancing, yeah. so we can't wait to see what you guys do this Saturday as well. And uh, all the best. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you so much. All right, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, it's all about the William Dawson basketball finals. Don't go away.